Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Happy Wednesday. My name is Jennifer Waters, and I am here in lovely central New York, Syracuse, New York, ready to share a little bit of information with you. Um, I don't know what's going on. I'm getting a message from, oh, do 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 do. We're going to ignore that. Is Mercury in retrograde? I never know. Of course, we all use that. Um, excuse. Okay. looks like I am still alive. Okay. So today I'm going to be talking about optimizing ovarian function during your IVF or IUI cycle. I guess I can't go on Instagram. That's fine. That's fine. And, uh, the reason I want to talk about this is because, well, first of all, it's the number one endocrine gland that you have that's producing the hormones that you need, primarily progesterone and a little bit of estrogen, right? So in the fertility world, whether you're doing IVF or IUI, that's the name of the game, right? Your ovaries are your powerhouse. It's where you are getting the most, um, where you need the most support and where the most recruitment is coming, the most demand in your body, I would say, is from these two little glands that really do a lot for us. And um, we really should start thinking about how can we combine the natural with the synthetic, right? If you want to maximize your outcomes, you want to do as much as you possibly can to support the body, to do what it was designed to do naturally, right? So your ovaries were designed to produce progesterone and create follicles, and this is where the eggs come out of. And so if you're doing a cycle, why not uh, combine some natural remedies along with the synthetic remedies? Because what happens is after between weeks 10 and 12, I believe you're going to go off most of your um, synthetic progesterone shots, suppositories, whatever you're doing, oral. So it can be, and this is my opinion, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm an acupuncturist and light therapist and Arvigo therapist, certified Arvigo, my abdominal therapy. Um, I suppose I should spend a little bit more time introducing myself. I'm a practitioner here in Syracuse. I've worked for CNY Fertility for, gosh, at least 15 years now. And I've been in private practice. I think it's coming up on 26 years. Um, so a long time. It's an honor to serve the community. I really enjoy. Somebody asked me yesterday, do you like what you do while I was putting needles into them? And I thought, this is a funny time to ask that question because <laughs> what if I say no? <laughs> that would not be funny. No, of course I love what I do. Otherwise, I would do something else. Um, it's a limitless universe, right? And we get to choose free will is a beautiful thing. And it's an honor to serve you all and the community. And that is the spirit of Chinese medicine. We are here to help you overcome obstacles, inner and outer obstacles. And I see a lot of women coming in that have had a history of miscarriage, which is so awful. I'm so sorry. There's a lot of loss. We have to deal with the emotions. Um, and we need to make changes, right? We all know the definition of stupidity, doing the same things over and over and expecting different results. So let's make some changes here, folks. Let's think about some of this logically. So my view is always going to be coming from the more natural way. I'm not bashing big pharma. I'm not bashing anything that you're doing, but I do like to combine things in order to have the best possible outcomes. So, um, our ovaries get um, out of their location because of the uterus is a suspensory organ, right? I think there's 40 ligaments and tendons that hold the uterus in place. So if she is retroflex or antiflexed, what do you think happens to those ovaries if the uterus is moved to the forward, back, side to side? The ovaries are going to be impacted by that um, structural misalignment, that realignment of the uterus, which is in so many women. I know it was for me. And the result for me was a hernia. I had an inguinal hernia. And after I did my training in the Arvigo world, I discovered, well, during the training, that my uterus had tipped down into the right from leading an athletic lifestyle. I'm sure I fell a lot more than I remember. Um, 
And so that actually, that mislocation caused, was part of the cause anyways, of a hernia that I had, an inguinal hernia that I was able to treat naturally after a long journey, which is a whole nother story. And um, once I found the magic cure, and this has been the case for all my chronic things that I was able to overcome instantly, but it's always the months, years, weeks leading up to that instant cure that allows for that miracle to happen. It's never, things really aren't a quick fix, but when you lay the foundation, improve your health, work on the emotions, letting go of the past, letting go of the negativity, changing your mind, understanding that the body is designed to heal, improving your nutrition, stop taking synthetic vitamins, which are causing more harm than not, add in the nutrients that you need, get some body work, de-stress, bam, things can really change quickly. I've seen a lot of miracles happen in a short amount of time. So the first thing we always want to look at, and this is pre, if you're getting ready for a transfer, we're not going to be doing a lot with looking at the location of your uterus. If you have a miscarriage and you want to take a deeper dive into what's going on before you enter into another round, that's another story. That would be a really good time to do it because we have to look at what's going on with your ovaries. Why aren't they producing the progesterone that they need? Um, so we always start with location, 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 function. If it's everything looks good and nothing shows up on an ultrasound or anything, then we can say, okay, well, what can we do? to support the ovaries to function more naturally. I'm sure if you Google a list of foods, there's probably a lot of good foods out there. Um, there are some very specific targeted supplements that I have, and I believe the ovarian bloom is one of them. And so what I would recommend, and I think there's another ovarian um, formula from molecular fertility. I think there's two. Bloom and Bloom Plus, I think one maybe has fish oils. I'm not sure. I'd have to look again. But anyways, so that's really what we want to do is so that we, we can smooth out that transition from when you're going off your medication so that your ovaries are well supported to continue on their journey. Because it makes sense to me, logically, if you stop a lot of uh, medication at once, it can be a bit of a rubber band effect. And the ovaries are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I've been in retirement. I've kind of been on vacation. I haven't had to do much. And now I'm back to work full time. Could you possibly give me some support here? How could they not feel like that? I mean, really, I know it sounds crazy, but I think you should talk to your organs. Talk to them. What is going on? What do you need? How can I support you more? Do you need more rest, more circulation, better nutrients? Um, whatever, more creativity. Remember this energetic part of your body, the first and second chakra, uh, are very tied into specific emotions that can get stuck there. And the second chakra is mostly connected to reproduction, sexuality, also money issues and control and creativity. Who doesn't have issues with that? I mean, everyone. So the more that you can release those emotions and make a plan for yourself so that you feel supported, uh, the better off you're going to be. Um, creativity is an interesting one because I meet a lot of women and I ask a lot of you, you know, what is your definition of creativity? And it's usually very specific and it's usually doing something, painting or you know, um, something outside of their day-to-day -day life, pottery or something like that. And it doesn't have to be. You can actually expand your mind to start thinking more creative. Allow yourself to fantasize about the future or about the present. Um, it's hard to, fan we can romanticize the past, but fantasizing about the past isn't that productive. In the quantum field, we now know research science has proved that if you want to manifest the future that you want, you simply have to start creating that feeling in your heart, the most electrically charged organ that we have, start changing those feelings in your heart and use your mind, your imagination to start creating what you want. And law of attraction, it will manifest if everything lines up. 
It's not 100% magic bullet. You have to keep going. You have to use your mind creatively. I'm always amazed at the people that are reluctant to do that or create obstacles. Well, I can't. I don't know. Just stop it. Just start being imaginative in your mind. So that's the first place. You can also do little things in your life. The way you address an envelope, the way that you write a note to somebody, the way that you set your dinner table, the way you light candles when guests come over. All of this is part of your creative juice. So don't make it more complicated than it needs to be, okay? Just start embracing the idea of the second chakra, this area of your body where your uterus and ovaries live. They need in order to function well. I'm sorry about all that dinging and danging. Um, okay, so I took a few notes yesterday. I'm trying to be more prepared about the topics that I talk about because it's really important, folks. And um, the benefits of doing natural progesterone during your cycle are quite vast. So you're waking up your ovaries to produce their own progesterone. Definitely you're gonna increase your chances of preventing pregnancy loss after you stop the prescription progesterone. So we're talking about preventing miscarriage here. And there's a couple targeted things that really can help. You go on my website under resources, jenniferwaters.net, I've got a free guide for you and it explains the benefits of everything. And, you know, don't you want to end up with a healthier endocrine system postpartum than when you started? The great thing about pregnancy is that it's the only time that you'll have two hearts, four lungs, four kidneys, four ovaries, if you're having a girl, obviously. So in Chinese medicine, this is the time of great healing, great abundance. So continuing to support your endocrine function during pregnancy is absolutely the way to go because you want to influence your baby uh, in the most positive way, right? And the hormonal feedback system is very complex, intricate system. And if you're already having infertility, unexplained, whatever you have, PCOS, endometriosis, so you've got this issue and you want to as much as possible not hand this down, right? Our genetics is not set in stone. We now pr have proven that we can influence our DNA in positive ways, not a thousand percent, but a lot can be overcome. And why not start in utero, right? So you want to continue to support your ovaries naturally so that postpartum, you're going to feel better. Uh, we know that there's a lot of postpartum depression, and a lot of that could be from the ovaries, right? This lack of progesterone is the happy hormone, right? So why not continue on to support? Now, if you don't want to take supplements, if you're sick of that, um, you can certainly do acupuncture, right? We can directly impact the ovaries with acupuncture. This is going to help wake them up. We can also do points in the ear, auricular therapy for the ovaries. There's some great spots in there. That's very easy to do. Um, there's probably some good essential oils you can do for the ovaries. Um, and then there is bioidentical uh, cream, progesterone cream, which we'll talk about in a minute. So, and here's the other thing. This is my personal um, view is that it's possible that natural progesterone when you take the natural with the synthetic, the chances for absorption, better functioning of the synthetic, it makes sense that they're going to help each other, right? So the natural support could actually support the synthetic to be synthesized better. It's like supporting your liver to function better. Whatever medication you're taking is going to be working better, faster, synthesize more quickly if you're doing some natural support as well. Now in the light therapy world, what could we do? I would suggest using the energy enhancer patches. If you want to get into phototherapy directly over the ovaries, we have now proven that phototherapy is absolutely the best modality for mitochondrial function, 
right? So if your mitochondria, this is the powerhouse of the cell. These are that's the little organelle in the cell that produces the ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is the energy of the cell. So the way it was explained to me is that actually nitric oxide, which is what is released through LED light therapy, the nitric oxide can get like jammed in the mitochondria and that prevents your body from absorbing the nutrients that you're taking. So not only are synthetic vitamins killing you, but even if you're taking the good stuff, it's not going to be as well absorbed if that nitric oxide is jammed in your mitochondria. It has to be freed up. It has to be repaired. You'll hear a lot more and more about mitochondrial dysfunction, right? How are we going to fix the mitochondria? Everybody talks about diet, diet, pills, pills, pills. No, let's bypass the gut. Let's bypass the liver. Let's go directly into your bloodstream, directly into your cells and get the nitric oxide release. So suddenly your body is now naturally producing more ATP and you're absorbing the nutrients that you're taking better. It's a much better way, 100% guaranteed people are going to be talking about this in a few years from now. And it's going to be like, oh, of course, light therapy is the best way to fix your how your cells are functioning. We know our cells are emitting biophotons and they're also receiving biophotons. So why wouldn't we use biophotons to fix everything? It makes a lot of sense to me. So if you want more information about that, reach out to me. So simply applying light, LED or phototherapy patches to your abdomen over your ovaries, absolutely going to help. If you have a large amount of fascia on your abdomen, otherwise known as fat, not going to be as effective. So you should apply the light over your ears because the ear is a microsystem and we can get to your entire endocrine system through the ears. So actually in a perfect world, you would do both. You could work on your lower abdomen, you could work on your ears. The foot is another um, uh, microsystem. <laughs> I was up in the middle of the night last night. I just couldn't, I just woke up for a little while. It was fine. But it kind of made me a little, little loopy today. So uh, you have nothing to lose by adding in the natural remedies to support the protocols that you're on. You have a lot to lose by not trying if you have a history of pregnancy loss, please try this. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over. It really hurts my heart when I meet women that have had multiple miscarriages and they're just jumping in and continuing and they don't change that much. So let's add in these a couple things to try so that you can get what you want. Um, most of the stuff I'm talking about is very affordable and it's all natural. So the progesterone cream too, there is a company, Dr. Platt Wellness, who I really like. He is an internal medicine physician. He's retired now. You can call him and talk to him. He's a very nice guy. And he makes um, estrogen cream and progesterone cream. And I don't know, we should talk to CMY Fertility and see about it would be really nice if they would get some of this. It's the way it was explained to me is that the progesterone cream cannot just be wild yam. You may have heard of that wild yam cream, wild yam cream for a while. You can go to any health food store and buy it and use it transdermally over the veins, gets absorbed in the body. Remember everything you're putting on your body is getting absorbed into your blood. It is absolutely affecting your hormones, your hormonal system, your liver, your kidneys, so please go as natural as you possibly can. There's still couples coming into the clinic wearing synthetic perfumes, using shampoo that's toxic. I can smell it. It gives me a headache. I'm overly sensitive, I admit it. But please, this is decreasing your chances of having a successful pregnancy. So really look at everything you're using and try to make it as natural as possible. So you just want to eliminate some things. We're always adding things to help us. Sometimes we need to just clear the decks eliminate things that are definitely causing uh, obstacles to the way our hormonal system is working. So anyways, back to the wild yam cream. Uh, the way it was explained to me is that the body can't really absorb it that well when it's um, just wild yam. It has to be converted. So I believe this Dr. Platt Wellness progesterone cream, it's wild yam with prescription grade progesterone, like bioidentical 
I'm not entirely sure. It's all it says on the label, but it's all natural. And so they're combined. So for immediate absorption, you can use it up to four times a day. Not only is it going to support your ovaries, depending on your body size, you can put it right over your ovaries, rub it in there, talk to them, wake up those ovaries, get everything working better. Tell yourself, you're supporting yourself in all levels. You want your body to function better. This isn't just about conceiving, receiving a child, receiving this being that's knocking at your door. It's also about achieving good health so that you are going to be healthy for the rest of your life of your child. You want to live a long time because they're going to be really depending on you for as, as long as they possibly can, obviously. Um, so progesterone, not only is it the happy hormone, it's absolutely essential for maintaining a healthy pregnancy, but it also uh, blocks insulin, excess insulin, and adrenaline. And that was the number one reason that I got involved with trying it is because I see a lot of people with adrenaline dominance pattern. They're stuck in fight or flight. They don't know how to get into rest and digest. You have to entrain your nervous system to relax. You can't tell somebody to relax. They usually end up wanting to slug you, right? You have to teach the body how to relax. And when you have excess adrenaline all the time, and I do see it fairly regularly, a lot of insomnia is connected to that. Um, you have to do some fairly um, consistent interventions to entrain the nervous system to unwind. And progesterone uh, cream is uh, indicated for that. So you've got a lot of options, folks. I'm going to leave you my website. Please reach out to me if you would like to email me any questions or call me. I would be more than happy to answer your questions. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. And take care. Mary Kelly, have you heard of West Coast Biotopical? No. Um, Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, for that tip. I will look into their biotopical. It's a cool name. It sounds good. Listen, there's a lot of good solutions out there. There really is. Ask each other, share information, and try different things. And I think that that's great. That is really good. I'll look into them. There's a lot of research that's been done. Help is here. Okay. So, all right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening.